So, when I was a little kid, my life was pretty great. I was surrounded with people who looked and thought and acted just like me and the people in my family. In hindsight, it makes me think of a wide, flat space, like a dance floor. There was plenty of room and we all knew the right moves. And did I already say that it felt safe? I also admit I was pretty obsessed with the idea of romance. My older brother was often the target of my instructional lessons. I had been giving him pointers about how to get a hot lady since I was about four. This included valuable advice like, if you're gonna get a hot lady, you're gonna need to be a good singer. I'd also suggested a pretty fantastic 16th birthday party for him where all the girls from Twin Falls would come over and he'd stand on our coffee table and just pick one to be his girlfriend. I was young enough that I couldn't see any flaws in this plan. Because of these years of matchmaking intensity, my parents were a little worried when I was seven and he told me that he didn't actually fall in love with girls and he didn't want to marry a girl. He told me that he fell in love with boys and he wanted to marry a boy. But they didn't need to worry. He was 10 years older than I was and had long been my hero. A little detail like that couldn't change his image in my mind. I just switched my focus to helping him find a hot guide romance instead. I just wanted him to be loved and to be happy. But he was, and always will be, my Jackson. The brother who fought to rock me to sleep at night and taught me to play peekaboo. It was quite shocking to me to discover that not everyone would be able to accept this information about my brother quite so easily. In fact, people, even tr people are quite concerned about who others fall in love with and even try to make laws about such things. I began to notice conversations that I hadn't really noticed before. Or at least I noticed conversations in new ways. Even though I was still just eight years old, I realized that the lessons that my church were teaching me that my hero wouldn't be able to be in the same heaven with our family forever if he fell in love with and married the man of his dreams. It made me feel quite lonely and misunderstood, and I started crying a lot at church and going to my mom's classes with her instead of the usual children's classes that I'd always loved. These were some of the first times that that wide open space of childhood felt uncomfortable. I knew that my brother wasn't going to be able to do all of those same required moves and wasn't going to fit in the same way anymore. Other conversations came to my attention in new ways. Some kids on the playground were talking about how people couldn't be gay until they were 18 years old. <laughs> I tried to stand out for my brother because he was obviously gay before he was 18, but they didn't believe me. They just wouldn't listen and they refused to talk about it anymore. And once I was told by a friend that it wasn't my fault that I had bad parents who taught me lies that being gay was okay. And this really hurt me because we were great friends. I couldn't even talk to her for a little while knowing that she thought I had bad parents and that my brother wasn't okay. That wide open face where I had always been dancing was under construction and I was starting to bump into people quite a bit. The other people on the floor hadn't changed and the moves were all the same. We just didn't fit the same as before. It didn't feel safe for us and we certainly didn't feel safe to others. I realized that my sexuality and gender non-conforming friends had always been feeling like there might not be space for them to fit. By this point, my mom had been doing a lot of learning about the LGBTQ community and had kind of drugged the whole family, family along for the ride. I was meeting a lot of really new and interesting people. Some of these people might not have felt comfortable on the flat space where we spent our time before and a lot of them had actually been kicked out. But they still welcome my boring family into their exciting spaces. Some of them look like us and some, not so much. They can have crazy hair or lots of tattoos. Some even wear clothing my mom might have called <coughs> inappropriate <laughs> a few years before. Families with two moms or two dads have kids who like the same sorts of things that I do. The people with the crazy hair and the tattoos talk about the same important things as my mom and dad talk about, like being kind and generous and helping people. Marching in colorful parades with awesome music is just fun, 
no matter what else in life you're interested in. Little by little, a beautiful mansion full of interesting people doing all sorts of dances was being built in the space where the smooth, flat dance floor had originally been. There was a lot less bumping into people because there was a lot more room where everyone could fit inside. I made friends with this really cool girl my age that I like a lot. She doesn't live close to me, but I get really excited every time I get a chance to be with her. When we first met, she hadn't had a friend over to play for an entire year, even though she still has lots of friends. This is because she is a transgender sibling, and the other parents are nervous about that influence on their children. My friend even had to move to a new house and switch schools just so that she could make friends that didn't know about her transgender sibling. But what a missed opportunity for all the other people at the old school who could have had so much fun playing in a great house with my friend. Shortly after this friend and I met, some kids on the playground were laughing and talking about a story their mom had just read in the news about a boy that dresses up and pretends to be a girl. And they were laughing and talking about how disgusting it was. I know a lot of transgender people and families and know how deeply this misunderstanding has hurt them. I tried to help the kids on the playground understand what it really means to be transgender, but I knew that my experiences weren't overcoming this large influence from their parents. Every time my family attends a pride event or a conference or I get to help at a hugging booth, I meet so many new people. I have become really amazed at how many different people there are. And they have giant hearts and beautiful voices and numberless talents. Many are vulnerable and share their heartbreaking stories with me. But they are bright and happy as well and they make me smile. And in the middle of that diversity and color and glitter. <laughs> the really beautiful thing is learning that all of these people are also so very much like me. I think the world would be really bleak and dim if we tried to hide all of this variety. Oh, and the sparkle that comes with this variety. Sometimes my family talks about how things were five years ago. When we, were, when we were most often surrounded by people who looked and thought and acted just like us. And there was safety in that. And my grandparents definitely felt more safe for us. But when we look at the mansion that's been created, we are astonished. New rooms are being added with new peop people and chances to explore and serve all the time. The beauty and strength of humanity lies in celebrating our diversity, not in pretending that we are all the same. And that includes the diverses, diversity that we find in sexual orientation and gender identity. We can acknowledge diversity and not fear it. And I wonder why people wouldn't want to welcome that. I think this might be because some people feel afraid of the construction on their flat spaces. They feel comfortable where they think everyone looks and thinks like they do. Construction can be messy and it can be risky. Sometimes it's even a little bit painful. Wouldn't it be better for all of the world to live together in a beautiful mansion where every room is welcoming, but decorated a little bit differently? Maybe quirky for some. But everybody gets their own different style of dancing, and nobody is forced off the smooth, but conforming floor where we are not welcome to be ourselves. The future is diversity, as we are allowed to embrace ourselves with our unique qualities and also to embrace each other for the unique individuals that we are. Each one of us can make a difference by starting the construction to make their, our own inclusion mansions. And I know, because I've already started to make a difference. All I had to do was start making friends with all different people and listen to their stories and accept them just as they are. I'm just one person. I'm still rather small, but I know I've only made a dent into what I'll do. I can't wait to change the world, and I hope that you will all choose to join me.